Hello and welcome to Rotted Reviews, and today I'm going to be taking a look at a movie that just hit the VOD platforms, Ty West's X. Now this review was at the request of patron Catherine, who hadn't watched it yet, and was wondering if it was worth the investment of time, money, what have you. And I'm pleased to say that, in my opinion, absolutely 100% yes. This is actually the second movie that I've reviewed this week of the premium VOD tier of about 20 bucks. This is a pretty expensive week to be a reviewer. Uh, but in this case, I was more than happy to shell out the ducats because this was a movie that I've been wanting to watch for a while and I just couldn't make it to the theater. So uh, there's, I don't know, let's, let's just actually take a moment and talk about this premium VOD pricing thing. Uh, I'm kind of of two minds about it. First of all, I do love the idea of distributors coming up with kind of middle ground, uh, you know, since the pandemic, it's been a little bit difficult. Uh, well, it's been a lot difficult as far as theatrical runs for a lot of people. Folks that are or are living with or interacting with uh, people that are immunocompromised, have comorbidities, or are just generally cautious, or any number of reasons why it's more difficult to get out and about. For me, the local theaters that are closest to me are cramped little spaces that are no fun to be in. Uh, so to go to kind of the premier theaters is about an hour and a half drive each way it's not that simple so as far as having this kind of premium rental fee um it's a lot i mean it is a lot of money 20 bucks for a rental that you aren't sure if you're going to like or not like wednesday's review of ama i said you know that was a halfway decent horror movie but i don't think it was worth 20 bucks it just so happens that i do think that x is but even then it's something that you don't really own and you know waiting a little bit longer for a physical media release anything like that you're gonna pay you know maybe 50 percent more and get yourself a nice blu-ray disc so, I don't know. Uh, I really am of two minds about it. I am mean, glad that there is this middle ground being met. I'm glad that there's this compromise between people that want to watch new releases or semi-new releases, as well as distributors that are trying to meet them halfway. But man, it seems like a $20 price tag is just right... <laughs> It's just a lot to bear, especially when theater prices are, you know, eight, nine, ten dollars for a matinee. Let's just be generous and say thirteen fifty for a normal viewing. And, you know, if you're not going to take into account gas and popcorn and things like that, it, man, it's it's. <laughs> There's a lot of pros and cons in each column, and I think that the only thing that's really kind of sparking this discussion inside of me is that $20 mark. I do think that if we were to have kind of premium VOD pricing set at like $12.99, something like that, I think that that would be a lot more palatable and more in line with what one might expect from uh, alternative to a theatrical release. Nevertheless, I am glad that there are options on the table. It's a far cry from where we once were, where we had to wait 9, 10, 11 months after a theatrical premiere before getting anything at all. All right, so let's get back on track. Yeah, the subject matter of the video. <laughs> the movie, Ty West's X. This movie starts out by showing us a group of individuals that are leaving an adult establishment and going off to shoot themselves a good old porn. Set in 1979, this ragtag group of rogue adult filmmakers are basically wanting to capitalize on the emerging home cassette market and the ability for people to enjoy their own little video proclivities from the comfort of their house. So this movie that they're going to be working on, The Farmer's Daughter, just happens to be set at a farm. Go figure. And the farm that they found to shoot in is a little bit of a boarding house situation where it has a little property right off to the side of the main house. And not really knowing what's going on, the farmer essentially establishes that, you know, okay, fine, you can spend the night here, but you didn't tell me there were going to be this many people, and I don't like the looks of ya. I don't think I like you, Wayne. In fact... I don't much like the looks of none of y'all. And as they start to shoot their movie and get these scenes knocked out, as well as a lot of other things knocked out, things start to devolve quickly. Now for me, I absolutely love this movie to pieces. In fact, this easily hits one of my top five films of the year so far. 
Ty West has a certain method about him that I really do appreciate, be that House of the Devil or The Innkeepers or X. I still haven't seen The Sacrament yet. I really need to. Um, but Or even VHS. I think the less, VHS to a lesser degree, but we'll focus on The Innkeepers and House of the Devil and X for right now. Uh, I think one of the things that I really love about his filming style is that he will take something that is a fairly simple concept and elevate it greatly through the use of well-established characters brought to screen in almost surgical precision. The characters that Ty West presents winds up taking this simple concept and elevating it to almost a high art level of gore and gruesomeness or jump scares or whatever may be the case of that particular film. These characters are dynamic, they're fun, they interact with one another in a believable fashion, there's a lot of depth and all three dimensions are front and center present in each and every one of them and how they interact with one another. Ty West's films are, in my opinion, one of the best examples of multi-character interactions to bring the screen to life. I think as far as the simple surface level, what's going on in this movie goes, there's a lot more that actually brews underneath the surface with a lot of subtext, and I kind of want to explore a little bit of that while remaining as spoiler-free as possible. And to do that, we need to talk about sex. Sex, and I'm going to be using that word quite a bit from here on out, is a fundamental aspect of our life experiences, albeit not necessarily a necessary one. And this movie kind of explores a lot of that. If we were to take sex as kind of a bubble diagram or some sort of diagram, I don't know, uh, maybe I'll actually make a visual cue for this one, <laughs> but if we were to take it and show it as a big circle in the middle with just sex, there's other circles that kind of will overlap that as far as our life goals, uh, desires, things like that. And it's kind of interesting in how often those overlap and cause confusion while at the same time sex itself not being necessary. Things like love, self-image, desire outside of carnal desire, and even just connection with other folks. It winds up being in a situation where sex can very easily overlap each and every one of those and cause confusion with each and every one of those. Confusing sex for love, confusing sex for self-image, confusing sex for connections to one another, confusing carnal desire with desire. All these things are kind of in play because of that overlap, that confusion. And this movie kind of explores a lot of those fundamental aspects of the various conflicts that can kind of arise when we do overlap and confuse things about our lives with sex. And it's not just the primary conflict of the film between the antagonists and the other folks that are involved. It is involved with a lot of, you know, infighting situations. Not even necessarily infighting, just internal conflicts between characters outside of the grisly gore and horror and aspects of things. While one character wants to move from boom mic operator into actually being a star of the film while her boyfriend cameraman is vehemently against that idea, again, we have the situation where the confusion between the connection with one another and sex starts to occur and it even kind of covers that in the discussion that they all have together after the first day's shots are done and there's this kind of clarifying conversations that's happening as far as aren't you okay you know how are you okay with him doing that to her when you're attached to her things like that and they have to kind of bring up that to them it's separate. When the camera turns on, it's not love. It's not connection. It's not self-image. It's sex. And it's an interesting conversation. You may agree with it. You may disagree with it. But at the very least, it's something that is kind of a fundamental, interesting aspect of humanity that is worthy of discussion. And if there's nothing else that I love about horror movies, it's that they inspire good discussions. There's been this thought that's kind of been brewing in my head a lot lately, because if you know me, you know that one of the most tiresome conversations that I can ever have is, is this a horror movie? It's trying to label something, a label a movie uh, or e even worse is the gatekeeping people that are just you know that's not a horror movie that's a sci-fi adventure what to me horror kind of transcends all other genres it includes all other genres to me horror is simply every story out there but without limits you want to have a comedy where somebody gets smacked in the face with a rake but if you're making a pg comedy movie and you that's as far as you want to go you know as opposed to somebody actually being smacked in the face with uh, the business end of a rake and having their eyeballs plucked out it's that genre without limits. Still funny, still comedy, just no limits. 
If you want to go ahead and smack them with the business end of the rake, pluck their eyeballs out, go for it. Knock yourself out. Good old comedy horror. Same with drama. You want to have drama, but you want to have it in a way that kind of puts a mirror up to two people that are kind of engaged in this thing and put it through the lens of possibly a supernatural element. Well, that wouldn't fly in necessarily in a grounded period piece drama, but put it in the hands of a horror writer or a horror director or something like that, it can just simply be what it is without limits. It can broaden the horizons. It can expand the scope. And it doesn't have to be bound to any earthly plane or any delicate sensibilities. You want to go for it? Go for it. That's horror. And to me, that makes for the best conversations. And that's one of the things that I loved about X. Me personally, I picked this up Tuesday night on A24's streaming, like pre-VOD platform, which was a lot of fun. And it was an interesting experience. And they had a little post-show thing that was pretty cool there. Um, but it's something that I actually enjoy in pretty much all of Ty West's movies. Um, the Innkeepers, I still think that for me, that one... <laughs> it's such an interesting one because I didn't like it the first time that I saw it, but I liked it more and more and more with each subsequent viewing. And it still remains to this day, at the end of the day, my favorite Ty West film. I enjoyed X so much. Like I said, easily top five of the year so far, but I do still have to put the innkeepers as my favorite of his. So yes, I absolutely 100% strongly recommend the Ty West film X. Uh, unlike Ama, I am going to say that if you have the money to spend $20, man, again, it's that whole conversation from the first part of the video here. Um, it's a lot, and I'm not going to pretend like it isn't. But this is one where I will say that I do think that it is worth a $20 watch if you have the money to spare. Um, if you don't, or if you want to save up for a physical release, get yourself a Blu-ray down the line. Believe me, I would not fault you for that. But either way, I think that you should try to make this a point that at some point, as soon as possible, you should add this to your watch list. So that should about do it. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I look forward to seeing you in my next review. Remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.